Hey everyone, before we get into the video, I just want to apologize for being so freaking rambly in this video. Um, please know that I'm doing very little editing, so it's very long. And, like, there's a lot of rambling. I'm sorry about that. Please try to enjoy anyways. Um, I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hey everyone! Maddie here and welcome back to another video. Today, in this video, as you can see, I will be ranking Ninjago Seasons if you are looking at your screen. If you are not, then every single bit of Ninjago media that relates to the show is listed down below. We have the pilots, we have Day of the Departed, we have all- we have the freaking special. Though, it's not really a special, it's a season, and it's considered a se season to me anyways, because the other season that is of similar structure is a season, and it doesn't make sense that this season that I'm talking about is not considered a season. Anyways, Ninjago has been a huge part of my life since I was, how old was I in 2012? I don't know. I was pretty young. I'm 18 now. It's been a huge part of my life. It's my special interest. I've been obsessed with Ninjago since the pilots. Thank you to my brother for introducing it to me. Anyways, since we're here, let me go through what all these different categories mean. This category, sobbing, crying, throwing up, shitting everywhere. It's so bad. These are the absolute worst seasons. The worst of the worst. Like, I will rewatch it, but I don't enjoy rewatching it. Bad, or as it says, bad. They're not like the absolute worst season ever, but they're not good either, if you know what I mean. Meh is like average. It, it's not like amazing, I'm gonna like die if I don't watch this over and over again. But it's not, like, it, completely unwatchable, like, sobbing, crying, throwing up, shitting everywhere. It's so bad, and bad is. You're fine, I guess, is, like, a B. It's, it's not the greatest of the great, but it's not average either. It's a bit above average, if you know what I mean. Yas Queen is like the the top the best the the good seasons they're like really solid they're very little flaws amazing I love them to death and the best of the best is as stated the best of the best these are the greatest seasons of all time these are the seasons that are flawless Every single time I rewatch the that season, I have immense enjoyment. I ha or I have an immense nostalgia, depending on what the season is. These are like my favorite seasons of all time. And if for whatever reason they're not up here if there's more than like three up here assume i messed up in somewhere but i do it they should probably be in here but i was just like wah because i think i think every ninjago season except for like two are really really solid but there are some that are better than others let's say so, without further ado, let's get into the video. Or let's start ranking them, I should say. 
the pilots. I think the pilots are fine. They're like a B. Like B minus. They aren't like the greatest of the great. But they are super, excuse me, they are super, super nostalgic. They are amazing, and they, they are, again, nostalgic. They, it's the first piece of Ninjago media we've ever seen, ever. It introduced us to all the characters, it introduced us to the golden weapons, it introduced the, um, what's it called? the golden weapons, it introduced Garmadon, it introduced Sensei Wu, it introduced kind of the vibe Ninjago had, but it's because it was the first thing, not everything was polished the way that it currently is, and therefore it's like not the greatest, but the, there's things in it that are really, really great and still hold up to uh, hold up today quality wise but it's like I w if I could I would put it higher but it's just not great like it's good it's just not great day of the departed uh, unpopular opinion I actually quite like day of the departed it's not like the greatest thing ever it's not like up here up here or right here but like it's like average uh, actually no it's a little bit above average to me it's like it's not bad it's not good either so i'm gonna put in meh actually because it it's not bad but it's not good either so it, it's just kind of average, it's average, it's meh. There's nothing really special about it. Even though it is a special. <laughs> Funny that the special isn't very special. Anyways, Day of the Departed is kind of crap. I don't like it very- Nope, I like it, but I know a lot of the fan base doesn't like it. That's what I was trying to say. And because of that, like, it, it kind of skews my opinion of it because I really, really like it. I really, really like the concept of, the, of Day of the Departed will bring back old villains. And if that villain manages to defeat that person, then they get to come back to life or whatever. I really, really like that concept. It just wasn't executed well. And... Cole has always been one of my favorites. He's always been in my top three, at least. My favorite oh, flop flip-flops a lot uh, for who my favorite ninja is. Right now, it is actually Cole, so that I have a little bit more bias towards Day of the Party because it is a Cole-centered special. But, you know, it's... The way the fan base sees it compared to how I see it is very makes me skewed about it because I do like it, but I understand why other people don't like it because the concepts in it, quite frank, quite quite frankly, I'm sorry I can't speak, quite frankly, are not executed great, and I wish they were executed better. I will admit, but. I still like it. It's I think it's average at best. Okay, what is this? This is season nine. Aha, hunted. Hunted. Yas Queen! It is a very solid season. It's not the best of the best, but it's really, really good. I really really like this season it has my mom's in it it has faith and jet jack in it and i see them as lesbians and in love and dating and they are my moms i love them they are amazing they make me very very happy and 
because of that, this season automatically give, gets a good grade. A good solid A. It's very, very good. What is this one? Is this the original? Is this uh, Rise of the Serpentine? That's what it looks like. Rise of the Serpentine. Let's see. Because of nostalgia, like the pilots, it goes in, uh, you're fine, I guess. Because, like, again, it has that nostalgic factor, but it's not good. It's just slightly above average because of a nostalgic fact, because of the nostalgic factor, sorry. It's very, very good, don't get me wrong. It sets up a lot of good lore, it sets up more Garmadon, it sets up the conflict of the show, it sets up the Serpentine, which become huge, huge, huge throughout the rest of the season and the series, the season, the series, and I, I, I really like the Serpentine, at least like the original four tribes, I thought they were really, really interesting, and the, like, the the green ninja stuff uh, was always like oh who's it gonna be who's it gonna be is it gonna be this person or is it gonna be that person is it gonna be zane is it gonna be kai is it gonna be cole is it gonna be jay is it gonna be nia is it gonna be someone that we've met but we don't know a lot about is it gonna be someone that like gets introduced later down the line is it going to be, like, a character that we don't know? Is it a character that we know? Blah, 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 blah. I do think that a lot was thrown into this season, though. That could have been moved into season two. Which I will get to season two. When I get to season two. But, you know, I... Frankly, I don't hate season one. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. It's like, okay, <laughs> I'm saying that, which makes me, which makes you probably think I should put a meh, but because of the nostalgic factor, like the pilots, it gets bumped up to your fine, I guess. Moving on, Skybound. The best of the best. My third favorite season ever. It has Jaya in it. It has good character interactions. It has a great story. It has a great villain. It has a great... Um, I can't speak. I can't think. It, it's just overall great. I used to really really hate this season fun fact but then i kept re-watching it and re-watching and re-watching it and jaya started to grow on me and the reason i really really hated it at first was because of how much jaya was in it and how much jaya revolved around the plot but now that jaya has grown on me i really really like the season it's again not like my favorite season it's my third favorite it's in my top three though and I really, really like it. I really like Nauticon too. His sadistic... Like... Quite frankly, pre predatory behavior. It's like really, really interesting to me. I don't condone what he does. I don't like what he does. And I don't like him as a person, but I love his character. They wrote him really, really well. And it's a Jay season. Jay has always been in my top three with Cole. So, like, seeing him get recognition and get his own season is just like, ah! <laughs> uh, season three. I do not like season, I do not like season three. I do not like it. It is so freaking bad. Like, I'm physically, like, 
cringing at the thought of it. It's... There's a lot I don't like about season three. Like, you just destroyed the Overlord. Why is he back? I get it that they explain and crystallize or whatever that he's immortal and he can't die or whatever. But they literally just defeated him. And I... How did he turn into a virus? How did that happen? If I'm just completely missing something or there was like... In a comic book or in a short that I didn't see or whatever... And, you know, it, it's this, that, and the other thing. I didn't see it clearly. I don't know. How did he turn into a virus, though? That is my question. And how did he come to possess technology? Why did you possess technology and not a mortal person that happened to be in the area where you were destroyed? Like Borg, for example, because... Clearly, he was in that area because it's Borg. Like, he built Borg Tower where the Overlord died and whatever. I feel like that would make sense. But, also, I don't understand how Borg knew the Overlord was around. Because he's like, oh, the Overlord's back. Or like, oh, he's back and blah, 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 blah. How did you know he was back? Like, I get it, you were building the Digiverse and whatever. But how did you know? I could just be dumb. But, how did you know? This season poses a lot more questions than it does answers. And, frankly, I don't like that. I don't like having answer, more and more answers as it, one, as season starts, and two, as the season ends. I had more questions than, an, than questions answered by the end of season three. I did not like that. And, like... The love triangle makes it very, very hard to rewatch. E even though I still do rewatch it, the love triangle makes it very, very hard to rewatch it. And it's. The love triangle makes me cringe really, really hard. Because I see Cole as gay, I've always seen Cole as gay. And I've already seen Nia and Jay as bisexuals. Jay also being a trans man. So. And also, I see Jay as Polly. So, I see Jay as dating Nia, but then also dating Cole. So, the fact that they were trying to imply that Cole and Jay were fighting over Nia really destroyed that for me like it, it it wasn't good it this season makes me cringe a lot and it makes me it makes me physically cringe it makes me physically angry i want to stop talking about it so i'm going to move on to sons of garmadon which is very very good i'm putting it above hunted because it's the season that leads into it, and I really, I like it more than Hunted. Okay, so, the Sons of Garmadon introduced Harumi. I really, really like Harumi's character. It's like a Nauticon situation. I like her character, I hate her as a person. I want her to not exist. I want her to not exist, but I like her character. Like, if she would ever be a real person, I'd want her in jail and dead. Like, on death row, at least. But, 
as she is within the Ninjago verse. I really, really. Uh, oh, excuse me. I really, really like her character. <laughs> I really, really like her character. Um, I really like the Sons of Gar Garmadon story. Uh, plot. There you go. I can speak. I really, really like the plot. I like it. It's done really well. It's nowhere as terrible as some of the other seasons, which we will get to them. And I I just think it's really, really cool that there's like this cult that disguises itself as motor as a motorcycle gang, but is actually like surprisingly dangerous. And surprisingly harmful and, like, surprisingly, like, deadly, I guess is another word. The transition between season 8 and season 9, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I feel like we're not just, like, jumping into a season randomly we're just like there there's a direct transition between each between the two seasons it's done really really well it feels like it's picking up a story from where it was it's not just like starting a whole new story, but it, it it has some elements from the last story, but it's a completely new story. It feels like it's the same story, but they had to split it into two seasons. Which, honestly, if they could, I would like it if season 8 and season 9 were <laughs> together, like combined. Because it would work as a combined season rather than being two separate seasons. I'm gonna move on to... Ooh. It only gets put into meh because of the Dark Island. I... Although the filler in season two is fun and interesting and it's not like a Oh, the, like, be a good person, or whatever. Like, it's not like other shows where it's, like, giving you a lesson or a moral story. It, they're, like, fun filler episodes, and some of, some of my favorite episodes within the, the filler... One of my favorite episodes of all time of Ninjago is within that filler. It's Child's Play. And that is technically within the filler part of that season. And... It's... That is one of my all-time favorite seasons. If not my all-time favorite season. It's... So that episode alone ranks it up a little bit, but with all of the filler, it just drags it down because it has no plot relevance. It's it's not good. The the filler is the filler that's there isn't entertaining enough to move it into like these higher ranks. If it if it wasn't for the filler, this would definitely be higher. But because of the filler, it's where it is. March of the Oni. I don't hate it. I don't love it either. And this season, season 10, makes me very angry. Because why is this considered a season? But the island, which is also four episodes long, is considered a special. It doesn't make sense. So, I would rather call 
this is special. If you're going to call the island a special, call March of the Oni a special too. If you're going to call March of Oni a season, this is all, the island is also a season. Rant over, this is meh. It, it, like, it's not terrible, but it's not, like, the greatest of all time. I think it continues the Oni arc, like, the Oni and Dragon arc very well. And it, 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 it gives a nice end to it, but the Omega was really underwhelming. Like, really, really oh, underwhelming. I thought the Oni were really cool, though. So, that keeps it from being in bad. I don't really have much to say on Oni and, on, on it. I really like the concept of the Oni and Dragon, like the Onis and the Dragons, but why the Oni so human-like, but the Dragons are like, obviously dragons? Like, why, and how does the humanoid thing and the dragon have a child and it's a human, or seemingly human? It's probably because he has, like, Oni powers and can shapeshift and whatever. It, it's very confusing, the, that whole thing. Anyways, I'm moving on to my favorite season ever. It has the greatest villain of all time. Chen is so well written. I love Tournament of Elements. It has so many new characters. So many new elements. And season 4 is the whole reason most of my OCs exist. I have, what, over 500 OCs? And I have... Last time I counted 48 elements or something, like fan elements. And they all exist because this season exists. And it introduced all these new season, all these new elements, sorry. And all these elements, and all these elements, and all these elements. So, like, it, it really makes me happy. I really, really like Tournament of Elements. I, I like it so much that I don't even know what to, where to start when talking about it because it's so good. It it makes me speechless because it's so good. I'm gonna move on to one of my least favorite seasons. It's watchable though. It's definitely cringy. But it's watchable, so it's going into bad instead of sobbing, crying, throwing up, shitting everywhere. It's so bad. Because it's watchable. Season 3, although I endure it, I don't enjoy rewatching it. Season 7, though, Hands of Time, has, like, good season, good seasons, good moments in it that make it interesting to watch and it has a serpentine villain or like not the main villain but like the army is like a serpent a group of serpentine i do prefer the original four tribes more than the vermilion but the vermilion are definitely not terrible they're not good so they're like bad and the time twins are really really interesting i really like their backstory i like it so much that one of my main ocs janora de la cruz is like their niece and like gets adopted and like all that it's i really i like them as characters but th the way this season is written i only like like 
really like only one episode the rest are kind of terrible <laughs> there's not a lot to say about it possession is very very interesting to me at first I didn't like Nia in the in this like what they did to Nia in possession because I always saw her as Samurai X. Nia was always Samurai X. There was no one better to be Samurai X than Nia. Nia will always be Samurai X to me. Or Nia was always Samurai X to me, sorry. So, them suddenly giving her powers was very iffy to me. I really didn't like it. But then Seabound came around and I really, really liked Nia. Like, she really grew on me. Like, she's in my top five now. She used to be my least favorite ninja. But, because of Seabound... She's in my top four, five. And this season introduced her being the Water Master, which is what made Seabound so good. Anyways, moving on from that, season <coughs> five. I really like the whip, too, so that definitely raises it. But it's not the greatest of all time either like i really really like the whip of this the whip is really good like the ghost whip is mwah. it's very nice i really like the guitar solo in the middle of it the however it goes i can't remember it off the top of my head because it's been a while since i've listened to it but it's very very good either way um, I really liked the sort of sanctuary. I wish it came more into the plot. Like, it's not in the plot ever again, and it's never mentioned again. So, I, I just wish the sort of sanctuary was more important in the show, because it's like, there's a really powerful blade that lets you see... Uh, the future of your enemy's attacks and whatever. It, it's these few little things that are keeping it from being the best of the best. I do really, really like Possession. And Moro, I really, really like. The, the way they transition from Season 4 to Season 5 is really well done. And I really, really like it. I don't have much else to say. Season 12. I was scared for season 12. Let me just say that. I, I was really, really scared. Because season 11 was honestly horrible. And we will get there. But I I think I thought season twelve was really really cool, really really good. I really like the concept of them being in a video game, and like most of the ninja can no, all of the ninja except Jay cannot. Wait no, all of the ninja canonically died at least once in that season. But. Like, they could do that, though, because it was a video game, and they just immediately, they just got brought back at the end of the, the season, or, yeah, at the end of the season, and I really liked the Pixane uh, subplot, because I like Pixane. Pixane is really growing on me, so... 
actually speaking about that because this is where Pig Zane was introduced. I'm moving it up. Anyways, this has some really nice Pig Zane and Unagami is a really interesting villain to me because of like his goals. His goal is to get revenge, which could have gone just as bad as Asphira. Quite frankly, it could have been worse than Asphira because of him being a video game and whatever. But they executed the whole revenge plot so much better. I don't know who wrote this season, but they took the concept of like a villain wanting revenge on someone. And they did it so much better than they did in season 11. Like, so much better. Speaking of season 11, here it is. Horrible, disgusting, throwing up, I'm shitting everywhere, I'm throwing up, I'm crying, I'm sobbing. I'm physically cringing, I'm throwing up, I really, really hate this season. I really, really hate it. And mostly because of the fire chapter. Even though I love Kai, I kin Kai. Ken and I are basically the same person. I think I said Ken and I. I meant Kai and I are basically the same person. I can Kai, but the fire chapter was horrible because there was a lot of filler in it and like it it was horrible. I don't know how to describe my dislike of season 11. I I thought it was too long. Like it was too long. So it was dragging, but it also felt really rushed. The the fire chapter, at least. And the thing about Season 11 is it had really fun concepts. Like, Kai losing his powers. Zane becoming a villain and, like, by getting corrupted. Um, like, tr uh, dimension traveling. All of that is really, really interesting, but they do a horrible job at executing it. I really, really dislike that season. It... If it wasn't for the fact that I was forced to rewatch it every single time I rewatched it, or I decided to rewatch Ninjago. I would I would never rewatch it if I wasn't forced to. But I'm forced to every single time because of how they they split up Ninjago. Ninjago is two series is on Netflix. And this is the first season. You can't just skip the first season. So, it's bad. It's just bad. Bring this up here, second favorite season. I love this season to death. It's a Cole season. Cole's my favorite character right now because of this. And I thought the how it is is really, really interesting. Like how there's multiple point of views, but the multiple point of views aren't bad. Like, there's not a bad transition between them. There's not a good... There's not a bad transition between them and, like, the point of... What happens between each point of view is interesting. There's never a boring episode in this season. There's... It's... I love this season to death. Like, if me and a season could get married, I'd want to marry season 13. 
Now, on the contrary, season 14, I'm call yes, I'm calling this season 14, because March of Oni is called season 10. Ninjago on Netflix calls this a season, so I'm calling it a season. And it, again, it follows the same concept, epi or not concept, episode structure as March of the Oni. Where it's four episodes. Excuse me. And I don't like it. It's disgusting. It's gross. I don't like it. It's... It's very bad. It's very, like, rushed. It's very bland. It's... There's not a lot of character growth, there's not a lot of character building, there's not a lot of anything really. It's just kind of a filler season to transition into uh, Seabound. Which, speaking of Seabound, yes queen, give me. I love Seabound. It's easily in my top five. But it's not like there's still flaws in it, though. Like... We had, we had just had a prince. Or... Like, some kind of princess -y or, or, like, royalty. In... Not the last season, but the season before that. Nope. Not the. We had basically just had a princess character that was in the season. So, Prince Kalmar being the ruler, the son of the ruler of the Dark Sea or whatever was kind of repetitive. So, that brings it down to, for me. But, I didn't hate Kalmar. I'm not saying I hate Vanya, or Harumi, or any of the other royalty things. I'm just saying that I... It, it got repetitive after a while. It gets repetitive after a while of there just being royalty after royalty after royalty introduced. However... The Merlopians were very interesting to me because every, from my understanding, every master of water is part Merlopian and thus anyone related to a master of wire, water sorry, is part Merlopian. So Kai and Nia are Merlopians. Nia are, is the rightful ruler of the sea or whatever. That's so interesting to me. She's technically a queen or, or a princess, whatever, because Maya should technically be the rightful ruler because she was the previous master of water. So like, she's the princess, of, she's the princess of the, of the, uh, the deep sea or whatever. I find that so interesting. It adds so much to Nia and Kai's character. I love Seabound so much. Now let's get to Crystallized. What I've seen. What I've seen. What I've seen in English is up to episode 18. There's still... Wait, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. There's still... There's still 12 episodes left in the series for us to see. So, this ranking could very well change based off what, uh, what I've seen. It's very, I'm going to put it here, it's very good. I don't hate it, I don't love it, I, I, 
I, I actually do really like it, and I feel like it will move up to here at some point, but just based off of what I've seen so far, it's <laughs> Yas Queen! Simply because it's it's not finished yet, so I, I, do, I can't say a lot about it. The reason it's not currently in the best of the best is because it has a few things about it that are really obnoxious. Say, the new ninja. Uh, the new ninja are very, very obnoxious. <clears throat> like the, the teal, the orange, the fuchsia, and the pink ninja, or whatever. And, and the yellow. They're all really, really obnoxious to me. I don't like them. And if the new series that's that was confirmed for 2023, if that, if the new ninja is the cast of that series, I will not be happy. Personally, I'm hoping it's a next gen or a, like, it's either a next gen or a shoot back in the into the past where we see the like the serpentine wars and the Merlopian wars and whatever whatnot. That's what I'm hoping 2023 will be. Anyways, speaking of crystallized, I hate I hate the new ninja and I hate Mary Mary Mar trustable Sally. I really really like Sally. Sally has a pride flag. Sally is the first openly openly supportive of the LGBTQ community character within the series because she has a little ally flag on her van. Technically, it's her dad's van, so technically her dad's the supportive one, but she drives it. So, we're calling it hers. We're calling that little pride flag hers. And it's very, very good. There is some filler within this, this season, but it's not bad filler, and it actually relates to the plot. Because the filler episodes are within the prison, uh, the prison arc, which... The, the, like, the prison arc had Fuji Dove, which I love Fuji Dove. Fuji Dove is, <laughs> I love him. I cry! He fills the night! <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Anyways, um, I... There's not a lot I can say about Crystallize right now because it's not done. It's not finished. All of the episodes, like, that aren't already on Netflix are supposed to be on Netflix on the 1st. October 1st. That's, what, three days from now? Shocking. Uh, excuse me. Shocking. Excuse me. Shocking. <laughs> and... I'm really sad that Ninjago is coming to an end, but they're they're ending on a big bang, from what I hear. And because they're ending on such a big bang, I think Ninjago is coming to a good end. It, it Tommy has said it's a bittersweet end, but I think it's gonna be a good end. Either way, like it's gonna end the series on a good note. I th I just think it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. And if it's not, then I'm going to be very upset because Ninjago has been in my life for most of my life. I came into existence in 2004, and I had Gravity Falls, Regular Show, and Adventure Time before Ninjago.
and they're all gone. They're they're gone. They're not airing anymore. They're not active anymore. They're not making episodes anymore. They ended. So, the fact that Ninjago is slowly, slowly, and surely coming to an end makes me very upset, but I'm glad that they're, like, there's confirmed content for future Ninjago. Like, we're not gonna end with Crystallized. We're just ending our current story with Crystallized. Which... I'm hoping that it, I'm hoping that they don't like pull some crazy curveball and it, it ends on like a cliffhanger or something. Like just give the ninja a happy ending. Let them live happily ever after. Let them be happy because they've been traumatized their entire life. Anyways, I'm done here so I'm just gonna say that and I'm gonna end the video here guys so uh, if you enjoyed please consider liking the video and subscribing to this channel and ring the bell don't forget to comment and share the video with your friends and family I'll see you in the next video, and bye bye now.